So now I know a ton about spiders, but I know nothing about scorpions. Lucky for me, Randy Babb from the Arizona Game and Fish Department knows like everything about scorpions. So he invited me out tonight for some late night scorpion hunt. Sounds awesome. Randy, I'm ready for the hunt. Brad, what are you doing? We're going on a hunt, right? I want to blend in. I don't want them to see me. We're scorpion hunting. We're not hunting mammoths. You look ridiculous. You don't need any of that stuff. You're off your chain. Look, why, why don't you go change? We got to get going. It's going to get dark pretty quick. We got to get going. Come on, you look ridiculous. Let's go. Come on. Holy cats. What a doofus. Why the middle of the night? Why did you bring me out here in the middle of the night? It's actually a good question. Scorpions are nocturnal, and this way they avoid predators. They're built for being out now. Well, let's go find some scorpions. Give it a try, huh? I forgot to ask you, Randy, why, why do we use the black light? They fluoresce under the black light like that oh. one. If we were just to use our regular headlamps, you can see he disappears. Oh, yeah. He's almost invisible, but we turn on the black light, and there he is. They look vicious under the black light. <laughs> they certainly look otherworldly. I've always heard that the smaller and more bright yellow the, the scorpion, the more venomous. Is that true? No, it's, it's actually not. Matter of fact, uh, size and color have nothing to do with how toxic the scorpion is. It's the type of scorpion, not what they look like. Look, we're in luck. Here's a bark scorpion. This is the most venomous species in the United States. You might if I stay behind you, do you? <laughs> I don't think you have to worry about him. I don't think he's interested in eating you. Oh, there's another one right here. Yep, sure is. Scorpions hunt by moving out from their burrows and sitting and waiting for prey to come by. And they have a whole host of different adaptations that allow them to find their prey because the lenses on the scorpion's eyes are so irregular, they can't actually see with their eyes. Look at him chase around. You see, he can actually feel the vibrations made by those ants walking around on the ground. Even that far away? That far away. Wow. There we go. Oh my gosh, it's so cool. I see he's feeling with that stinger, trying to find a gap in the ant's armor. That's used for subduing prey, and the pinchers up front, the pedipalps, they use for holding prey. As long as it's not me, I'm okay with it. <laughs> they are incredible predators and very, very, very efficient. They have one of the highest intake to biomass conversion rates of any animal on the planet. They can get a meal once or twice a year and do just fine. Here's another one here. Let's take a look at him. We've got some forceps here. Look at him really closely. He looks almost prehistoric. Well, that's because they are prehistoric. Millions of years before the dinosaurs were here, scorpions were. And here it is millions of years after the dinosaurs and scorpions are still here. These are one of the most successful organisms to ever inhabit this planet. What got you interested in studying these guys? I'm kind of one of those biologists that are always interested in the odd things. The more I've dug into scorpion biology, the more fascinating they've become. Look at that, how could you not be interested in something like that? I guess it beats sitting in an office. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> this you is know? your office. Yeah, well, you know, that, and that's one of the great things about being a biologist. You get out and you get to look at stuff and, and think about things and wonder why it does this. And one question leads to another and another. Oftentimes answers lead to more questions. But never, never, ever ends. And that's incredibly exciting. 